Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Every convergence sequence of real numbers is bounded. Now, before we get into the proof, let's remind ourselves what a convergence sequence of real numbers is and what a bounded sequence of real numbers is. To start out, if we recall, to say that the limit as n approaches infinity of xn is equal to x means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer k, such that for all positive integers n greater than k, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon. And next, if we recall, to say that xn is bounded means there exists a positive real number capital M, such that for all positive integers n, the absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital M. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. To start out, let's give ourselves a convergent sequence of real numbers. I'll call it xn. And we'll say that the value that xn converges to is x. And in order to complete the proof, all we've got to do is show that xn is bounded. Which means we want to find a positive real number, which makes this statement turn out true. Now, since xn converges to x, this means we are given that this statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number 1. So let's take epsilon to be 1. Taking epsilon to be 1, we have that this is true. So there is some positive integer k, such that for all positive integers n greater than k, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than 1. Now from here, it turns out, we can show that for all positive integers n greater than k, the absolute value of xn is less than 1 plus the absolute value of x. And to see how that's the case, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer greater than k. We'll call it n. Well then, if we write down the absolute value of xn, this is going to be equal to if we take xn and subtract and add x. So just like that. But then, by the triangle inequality, the absolute value of this must be less than or equal to the absolute value of this plus the absolute value of this. But then, let's remind ourselves that this statement is true. And this statement works for every positive integer greater than k. So it must work for the positive integer n that we have here. So taking n to be the n we have here, we have that this is true. Well then, if we take this inequality and add absolute value of x on both sides, we have that this must be less than 1 plus the absolute value of x. So the absolute value of xn is less than 1 plus the absolute value of x. So putting this together, we see that under the assumption n is greater than k, we have that absolute value of xn is less than 1 plus the absolute value of x. Since n was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all positive integers n greater than k, the absolute value of xn is less than 1 plus the absolute value of x. Right, this fact is going to be useful in our proof. Now, we're going to define the following set. We define the set S to be the set consisting of absolute value of x1, absolute value of x2, and so on and so forth, up to absolute value of xk. In addition, S consists of 1 plus the absolute value of x. Okay, now let's note that S is non-empty and finite. The reason why S is non-empty is because, for example, 1 plus the absolute value of x is an element of S. The reason why S is finite, however, I won't justify. I think it's pretty clear that S is a finite set. So why are we mentioning this? Well, it turns out every non-empty, finite subset of real numbers has a largest element. So S must have a largest element. 
and we'll call the largest element of S capital N. And our claim is that this choice for capital N is a positive real number and it makes this statement turn out true. So let's show that. We'll start by showing that capital M is a positive real number. And to see why that's the case, well, let's first note that 1 plus the absolute value of x is an element of s. And because capital M is the largest element of s, this means that capital M is greater than or equal to every element in s. So in particular, capital M is greater than or equal to 1 plus the absolute value of x. And we know that 1 plus the absolute value of x is greater than 0. So this tells us that capital M is greater than 0. So yeah, capital M is a positive real number as required. All that's left to show now is that capital M makes this statement turn out true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer, give me an arbitrary positive integer. I'll call it n. From here, we want to show that absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital N. Well, let's break this up into two cases. Either n is greater than k, or n is less than or equal to k. And in either case, we're going to show that absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital N. Let's start with the case that n is greater than k. In the case where n is greater than k, well, let's remind ourselves that this statement is true. And since this statement works for every positive integer greater than k, it must work for the positive integer n that we have here. So taking n to be the n we have here, we have that this is true. But remember, 1 plus the absolute value of x is less than or equal to capital N. So this tells us that absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital N. And that is exactly what we wanted to show. So that completes the case where n is greater than k. Now let's move on to the case where n is less than or equal to k. Now in the case where n is less than or equal to k, n lies between 1 and k. So the absolute value of xn must be somewhere in our set s. So absolute value of xn is an element of s. But remember, since capital M is the largest element of S, this means that capital M is greater than or equal to every element of S. So in particular, capital M is greater than or equal to absolute value of Xn. Or in other words, absolute value of Xn is less than or equal to capital M. Which is exactly what we wanted to show. So in either case, we have shown that absolute value of Xn is less than or equal to capital M. So putting this together, we see that under the assumption n is a positive integer, we have that absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital N. And since n was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all positive integers n, the absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital N. So we have proven that this statement is true. So with this choice of capital N, we have shown that these two things are true. So there exists a positive real number such that this is true. And so that proves that our sequence is bounded. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.